welcome to the Creepy Files. That's right, with season three, we've got a new name. Now, does this mean we're not covering creepy pastas anymore? Not even close. The only reason I changed the name is to give myself more room as to what I can cover. For instance, this episode we're covering a Five Nights at Freddy's fan VHS series by Squimpus McGrimpus on YouTube. And next time we might cover an SCP file, an ARG, or another creepypasta. This way I have more options of what I can analyze. So let's talk about this video series. This is a VHS ARG style set of tapes based on Five Nights at Freddy's. Let's take this tape by tape and then talk about what they mean altogether. And don't worry, if you don't know the lore, I'll give a brief summary of things that are important to this series uh, after we cover the tapes. Tape 1 is called Fazbear Entertainment Video Manual. The video starts with a text to speech voice welcoming you to the Fazbear Entertainment Maintenance Video Manual. The video instructs you on how to take apart and clean animatronics. After putting them into maintenance mode, the video instructs you how to take them apart. Then, torso comes off and... Boom. A sensor bar covering what is clearly blood leaking from the animatronic. Finally, the narrator says... Climb inside the torso and accept your death." As the lights go out. Tape 2 is called Bonnie Joint Movement Testing. The video is a set of title cards, followed by movement of the specified area of the animatronic until things stop moving. Title cards appear, but the animatronic just stares blankly and unmoving. Then it cuts back to the stage to reveal Bonnie is gone. The camera pans and we see the animatronic standing in the dark. In between cuts, it moves around the room until... Then a gift box is shown and the puppet appears above it, screaming while the music plays. Finally, the last few frames show Freddy Fazbear leaping from the box towards us. Tape 3 is called Sound Response Check. This is where things get really interesting. It opens with a card instructing you to make sure your speakers are in the right place. Then it plays a sound. It tells you that Chica should be facing to the left, and she is. The same happens with the right. Finally, another sound is played, but the instructions as to where she should be facing is seemingly cut off. Then, it cuts to Chica staring at the camera. Suddenly, music starts playing and we get the following text. This music makes me feel better. It makes me think about birds. I like birds. They're pretty. One time, I saw a bird sleeping in the snow. That's what bad dreams are about. I feel like I'm sleeping in the snow and can't get up. It's too cold for me to do that. Things don't breathe when they sleep in the snow. I can't breathe. Okay, out of the whole thing, I actually got uh, chills reading that just now, so that was fun. Then the music cuts and a ghostly image of a girl fades in from the darkness as the phrase, I can't breathe, is repeated again. Then... <laughs> Tape 4 is called Pirate Cove Pre-Show. It starts out as just a cute video that would play before Foxy's Pirate Cove show. Three sailor minutes! In your lingo, that would be three minutes! Shiver me timbers! Three minutes! When it ends, it cuts to the silhouettes of five children. One fades away. The tape plays again, but the audio is interrupted suddenly by a siren-esque sound. Then another child disappears from the silhouette lineup. The video starts again, but the audio is replaced by a text-to-speech voice telling us that viewing the tape is prohibited and instructing us to discard it. Then all the children disappear. Suddenly a disturbing visage of the purple guy appears with the audio What the ladder fuck, dude? I thought you wanted an audio. Then we're met with a series of disturbing images, the text go go go, as the voice laughs. Then... Now the fifth and final...
We get a warning telling us that the tape may be disturbing, but we'll watch it anyway. We have to. We're met with an opening title screen for Fred Bear's Family Diner, and for a second, we get to see what appears to be a live performance of Bonnie and Fred Bear. Then, we get a rundown of a Springlock costume. It reads, in a nutshell, a Springlock costume doubles as both an animatronic suit and a wearable costume. The costume can switch between animatronic mode and costume mode. The Springlocks separate the endoskeleton from the suit itself, so the mascot actor can climb inside. A well-assembled suit has little to no safety risks, but in case of a faulty costume, you can send it back for review. Then, a very unsettling image of Fredbear, followed by an image from the office with the phone guy's death call playing. Then, Golden Freddy appears and jump scares the camera. Then, the text, four tapes hidden inside their empty heads, appears as images of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy's head flash. We get a re-rundown of each tape beforehand. We're then told, you are gifted. You found the fifth, with an image of Golden Freddy. Then, the text seems to be talking to someone very specific. Someone named Michael. It says that before Michael's brother died, something else happened. Something was wrong with the suits. Now we see what seems to be someone inside a Springlock suit, as it malfunctions, and hear the screaming victim inside. Then, the text tells us that Michael's father met the same fate and it killed him. But only for a while. It tells Michael it will tell him where to find his father, as an image of the puppet, likely the one speaking, appears from the darkness. An image of the horror attraction, Fazbear's Fright appears and tells Michael he'll know when it happens. It then instructs him how to burn the attraction down, as an image of Springtrap, aka the Purple Man, aka Michael's father, stands engulfed in flames. The puppet text tells Michael that he can end this for good. Calming music plays as the puppet reassures Michael. It says that when it's all done, everyone will be free, including Michael. It also says that Michael's brother will forgive him. Finally, it ends with Bonnie and Fredbear fading into the darkness as a monologue performed by them about friendship plays quietly. Okay, that is a lot, so what does it all mean? Okay, so for those who don't know the lore, let's talk about what generally is accepted uh, as a theory. There's nothing concrete, really, but it seems like this is what these tapes are based off of. A man we'll call Purple Man is a father. Fredbear and or Golden Freddy and Bonnie or Golden Bonnie are two characters uh, that are a part of a Chuck E. Cheese style restaurant. Other characters include a not Golden Freddy, a different Blue Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. Purple Man murders a child, and that child possesses the puppet, another character from Fazbear Entertainment. Purple Man later murders five children, and they're stuffed into the animatronic suits. Now, they're haunting the suits. Sometime during this, one of Purple Man's two sons dies in an accident caused by Michael, the other son. Finally, the souls of the Purple Man's victims come to haunt him, and he ends up dying in a Springlock suit, an unsafe new experimental animatronic suit hybrid made by Fazbear Entertainment. However, his spirit ends up haunting the suit that he died in, and his possessed spirit stays locked inside the abandoned restaurant until a haunted house company, 30 years later, creates an attraction based on the rumors surrounding Fazbear Entertainment, and end up digging up Purple Man, who is now known as Springtrap, because of his suit that he died in. Got that? No? Well, for the most part, neither do I. The canon story is so confusing at this point, I try not to bother. But for this, I will bother. So what do I think about the story of the tapes? Well, it seems like these tapes were created by the puppet for Michael, as is evident by the last one. The other tapes were almost like a test. Once Michael found the fourth one, he was gifted with the final tape by the puppet, by some sort of magical means probably, hence why the video itself is called Non-Existent Video. Another possibility is that the reason he could find the final tape was because it was hidden in the Golden Freddy head, and maybe Michael was the only one who could find it due to his family ties with the restaurant, his father aka Purple Man. In this story, I don't think Michael really knew the whole story of what happened with his father. The puppet needed Michael to kill the Purple Man by way of fire, but wasn't sure if Michael was ready to turn on his father like that yet, so the puppet created a series of tapes slowly revealing what really happened to Fazbear Entertainment and his father's involvement, even including some of the other spirits in the tapes. But after these tapes were created, it appears that Fazbear Entertainment got a hold of at least one of them and tried to hide the truth, maybe even hiding them away in the heads of the animatronics which now lay abandoned. 
but somehow Michael found them and the puppet sent him on his quest to burn down Fazbear's Fright, which we see was successful in the games. Or was it? I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Creepy Files. I know this one was a bit long and maybe some a little confusing for people who don't know the lore, but I really wanted to bring some attention to this amazingly well-made series. Let me know what SCP, ARG, uh, r slash no sleep story, short story, movie, I guess I can cover really anything now, including creepypastas. So let me know what you want me to cover in the next episode of The Creepy Files in the comments below, or just tell me your thoughts on this episode. The best comment will be pinned. I'll see you all next time. Flying Gorilla from my new app on the App Store, Flying Gorilla. <laughs>